The basic idea is that Phil Sprague is in the business of, well, manufacturing and uh, providing these machines to, to business and industry. Uh, the machine is called a voice stress analyzer. Phil Sprague is an ex-Dallas cop, uh, was an investigator with the uh, DA's office in Dallas and is now in the voice stress analyzation business. Uh, are these admissible in courts of law, uh, the results of... of uh, uh, truth uh, verification, yes. Uh, I just recently testified in a capital murder case in, a, uh, in Santa Barbara in which uh, the evidence was admitted into court. Uh, I've also testified in a um, uh, wrongful death case. How does it compare was, to the polygraph? I when mean, you run it side by side with a polygraph, if you're running a polygraph test and tape record that polygraph test and then analyzed it uh, on this voice analyzer, uh, you get about the same results all the time. They've done comparative studies showing 95 to 99 percent comparison. What you are about to see is the analysis of a truth verification test. Let me first relate to you the circumstances behind this interview. A business owner suspected that an employee was stealing money from his company. We narrowed it down to three employees. After a personal interview that lasted one and a half hours, the subject admitted to stealing approximately $15,000 in cash and adamantly denied any other covert acts of dishonesty. The test was given to verify what she had admitted and denied. The first two questions in the test are used only to adapt her to being asked and responding to questions. The other questions, such as the day of the week, the month of the year, and the year, are baseline questions. If a relevant question deviates 20 to 30 percent above baseline, or 40 to 50 percent below baseline, deception is indicated. Okay, the test is about to begin. Do you live in the United States? Yes. Do you live in the state of California? Yes. Regarding the day of the week, is today Sunday? No. Regarding the theft of money from the company, did you intentionally withhold information about the theft of money from the company? No. Apparently, she was truthful when she stated that she had stolen approximately $15,000 in cash. Regarding the month of the year, is this the month of May? No. Regarding the theft of merchandise from the company, did you intentionally withhold information about the theft of merchandise from the company? No. It was later determined that she had also stolen gold and silver from her employer. Regarding the year, is this the year 1982? No. Is there some job-related act of dishonesty that you have not told me about that you are concerned about being discovered? No. It was also later determined that she had passed information to a third party about a few of her employer's clients and while the client was at her employer's office their homes were being burglarized. Regarding the day of the week, is today Saturday? No. Regarding your answers, did you intentionally lie to any question in this test? No. 
What do you think? Well, fantastic. Uh, Phil Sprague, I thank you. It's a fascinating uh, step, and uh, maybe we learned something about me. The retail industry may be making money this summer, but it's also facing huge losses due to employee stealing. We get a report on what's being done about that from News 8's John Kalia. One month ago, prospective and current employees at this ice cream store were given a series of tests. They were asked about their attitude toward the store owner, customers, and how they feel about stealing from the boss. Owner Dave Manhalter declined to appear on camera, but told me his losses have stopped since the test was given. On a larger scale, the manager of 14 stores in San Diego selling women's clothing hopes to have the same success. The tests are tape recordings that reveal stress in the voice while the person answers questions. It's offered by Loss Control Associates, and test results are available in 24 hours, with a claim of 90% accuracy. Written questions through other companies take a week for results and are said to be only 70% accurate. Businesses want to find potential problems with employees before they happen. But after a loss happened in her stores, Gloria Cleveland said after four suspected employees were tested, The person who we felt had been indicated on taking the money wouldn't return for the second interview and gave a resignation and left. So we felt we eliminated our problem with very little <laughs> recourse. Some labor unions have tried unsuccessfully to ban honesty tests, but the feelings of most employees seems to be... I think if they start asking me about my religion or my political views, yes, then I would feel that my rights were being infringed, but not about theft or something like that, no. And to most employees of this 200-store chain, the only conspiracy happening concerns fashion. <laughs> the 5 o'clock edition of News 8. And a technological answer to the question, who won the first presidential debate? The presidential debate on Sunday has been thoroughly analyzed, or has it? Men and women can be influenced by emotion, but what about a machine? Can it tell us which candidate was telling the truth and which one was under the most stress? A San Diego man thinks so. Uh, and Phil Sprague says his machines tell him in just 15 minutes all he needs to know about a person. His company is called Profiles, and he screens employees and job applicants. The equipment is not a lie detector, rather a measure of voice stress he says is 90% accurate. So if he needs just 15 minutes, what about a 90-minute debate? That's why my proposal protects everybody from $25,000 a year or less against any tax increases. I believe he's trying to cover over what he has uh, most emphatically stated that he is going to raise taxes if elected. There you go again. <laughs> I don't have a plan to tax or increase taxes. I'm not going to increase taxes. You said, there you go again. And you said, oh no, there you go again, Mr. President. And what did you do right after the election? You went out and tried to cut $20 billion out of Medicare. And, and and so when, I, when you say, there you go again, people remember this. Was Mondale happy about the there you go again? No, he was very irritated about it. He was, uh, he was very emotionally upset about uh, Mr. Reagan, President Reagan, saying there you go again. I'll tell you what I think has been the most outrageous thing in political dialogue, both in this campaign and the one in 82. And that is the continued discussion and claim that somehow I am the villain who is going to pull the Social Security checks out. The Social Security, let's lay it to rest once and for all. I told you never would I do such a thing. I don't think he's going to cut benefits either. Sprague says the machine showed Mondale under more stress than the president. Are you going to go His overall Social impression? Security. Number one, they're very evasive in responding to questions that they are asked. They don't give direct responses. And that, friends, is one point man and machine agree on 100%. That's the definition of a politician, isn't it? <laughs> you bet. Some uh, human observers, John, thought the president uh, lost his concentration a few times. Did the machine have any way of measuring that? The machine said yes, that uh, the president definitely lost his concentration. Either he was concentrating so much on what he was going to say, or else it just went out the window. Interesting, though I'm not sure we need still another political pundit. 